Right, we have uh, quite interesting headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies, and I'm glad to say at this point, our guest uh, analyst this morning is ready. He's a chartered mediator and conciliator, Chris Kende Wandu. Very good morning to you. It's a brand new week. Great to have you back. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, it's nice to see you again. Good morning. All right, all right, fantastic. We also have a uh, Mercy Ebopo standing by as well as we go through um, the headlines on the front pages of the Delhi's Mercy. Um, some very interesting headlines, wouldn't you say, and uh, making for quite an interesting conversation this morning. Well, let's see what um, Kane De Wando makes of the headlines this morning. All right, all right. Chris Kane Wando, let's um, uh, keep you on ice for a few minutes while we go through these headlines, starting with the um, leadership newspaper. Uh, a very interesting uh, position uh, or expose by the paper ahead of the APC presidential primaries. I mean, they've not even screened uh, the, the aspirants yet. We're waiting for that. Uh, but it says APC presidential flag bearer Ogbon Naya Ono may be Buhari's dark horse. Ogbon Naya Ono may be Buhari's dark horse with a writer president to use Ono's choice to pacify the Southeast will present him to other aspirants in a matter of days. Rooting for Ono will be a master stroke for country's unity at this time, the paper says. Wow. Uh, two Calabar hotel workers die in their sleep. Hayatuddin, I'm not in politics for personal gain. His posters have been flooding the streets of major cities in the country. Local government funds, states lose as court okays FGs. And NFIU's guidelines, uh, states lose a Scott O'Kay's FG, NFIU's guidelines. And PDP primaries, Ishaku, Dan Kwambo, Turaki, Bolaji Abdullahi, and Ned Walker pick Senate tickets. Uh, this is talking about the senatorial primaries of the People's Democratic Party. Court jails dismissed policeman for life for defiling a nine year old. Security challenges will soon be over, PMB. And uh, strike, Nasu holds emergency meeting today. These are the headlines on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Uh, let's shift our attention from the leadership and look at the punch newspaper this morning. APC presidential primary, Lagos, Bornu, lose jumbo delegates again, party shift senatorial poll. Uh, it's boldly written on the punch. Kanu, Katsina, Oshu, Oyo, Akwaibo, and five others command numerical strength. And Buhari meets aspirant Wednesday. Reps postpone resumption over primaries. Underneath the bold caption on the punch, that's what you find. Uh, moving away from the bold headline. States grown over delayed revenue sharing. FAAC meets today. 36 states lose financial autonomy suit against the federal government. And you also find former President Olusegun Obasanjo meets WK others, six justice and fairness. Cashless transaction hits 117.33 trillion naira in four months. This is according to the NIBSS. And you also have the NSIA gross net asset by 19% to 920 billion naira. And just before we move away from the punch this morning, more interesting headlines. Lagos explosion, gas plant owners dies. Lawyer insists on 800 million naira compensation. And uh, 23.3 billion naira for Dasuki case begins afresh after seven years. I mean, <laughs> all things are possible. Telecom protests 90 billion naira new phone tax to build subscribers. Oh, oh, you just need to, I mean, I don't even know what to say. But let's see how all of this pans out. Again, sit-at-home order paralyzes Emo and a number of banks. Schools short. What is really going on? And uh, you also have dismissed policeman bags live imprisonment for defiling pupil. Uh, that's nine. Uh, quite unfortunate. You have a lot of pedophiles moving around. But that's, these are some of the headlines uh, we can take this morning on the punch. 
All right, let's go straight to the nation newspaper with these interesting headlines on its front page. APC primary, Buhari aspirants, governors for high level talks. What are they going to talk about? Um, some would say, well, are they going to just allow the delegates to decide? APC primary, Buhari aspirants, governors for high level talks. Oshibajo, Tinubu, Amechi, others for today's parley. National Assembly leadership, NWC members to meet president. All right, the die is cast. More from the paper. Suspend Accountant General, a suspended Accountant General became political appointee in 2021. GDP 3.11% Q1 growth driven by trade telecoms. Uh, Emifiele withdraws suit against INEC, AGF. This is uh, his suit uh, against the, the Independent National Electoral Commission. And he's seeking to be allowed, he was seeking to be allowed to um, contest the 2023 elections without resigning. Uh, NSIA's net assets grew to 919.7 billion naira in 2021. APC's planned screening of Jonathan and Mayfield and others raises curiosity. The party is saying that even though uh, these persons may not have submitted the forms that were bought for them um, to it, the APC, they will still screen them. One wonders how they intend to get these persons to the screening venue. All right, uh, at the bottom of the front page, government, government okays contract to buy more kits for Air Force. Lagos develops off-grid strategy. These are the headlines on the front page of the nation. Away from the nation, we take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. PDP NAS primaries, Otam Banki W. Ango Abdullahi's son, Tegbe Ned Woke, Lai Win, uh, that's what you find there. Sons of Fayoshi, Kashimo also emerge. Underneath uh, the rider, the big story this morning, uh, that's what you find. That the six governors lose suit against financial autonomy for local government. 19.4 million Nigerians to face food crisis by August. According to Echoes, you also have Despite Tough Market and SIA. Net asset grew to 919.7 billion naira in 2021. Despite Tough Market and SIA's net asset grew to 919.7 billion naira in 2021. COVID-19 not over, WHO wants. Nigeria's GDP grew by 3.11% in the first quarter of 2022. Coalition of seven political parties in alliance and CF front, uh, that's what you find, the SDP, the ADC, ADC and the AMP disassociate themselves from the merger. Two months after attack, Flight resumes at Kaduna Airport and court grants DSS permission to detain terror suspect for 60 days. Presidential ambition and Mephili withdraws suit against INEC and the Attorney General of the Federation. Too late now to sign Electoral Act Amendment poll uh, observers tell President Muhammad Buhari. And you have the APC revises, revised timetable for governors and House of Assembly, NAS uh, primaries. The headlines this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. All right, time to bring in Chris Kendi Wandu, uh, a chartered mediator and conciliator at this point. Uh, uh, Chris, good morning to you once again. Let's uh, start with a look at um, this, this, this one uh, on the front page of uh, The Nation. Uh, it, it's interest, it interests me um, and the audacity of uh, the whole situation. The uh, central bank governor, Gordon Mayfield, he was drawing his suit against INEC and the AGF. He was seeking uh, in the suit to uh, 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 restrain these two bodies or authorities from stopping him from contesting the 2023 elections and um, as a sitting central bank governor. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, um, um, don't forget... Um uh, there was a suit which instituted um, against INEC and the uh, AGF uh, trying to determine his uh, 
his ability or qualification or ability to um, contest the election uh, as a public servant. That um, that uh, action was instituted by his uh, by his lawyer, and um, then also uh, it, it, there was a suit also uh, somewhere in Delta State, I think that's about or whatever, where a, a judge. Uh, uh, gave him the permission to go ahead uh, with that. But after some time, after a week or two, the judge withdrew that, um, uh, that permission as well. So, so as it were, he had no option than to withdraw this case uh, uh, as it were there. So that, um, the, but for me, it's neither here nor there. The fact remains that um, from the directive given by the president, Every public servant um, appointee of the, uh, of the government um, that want to contest under the APC had up to Monday um, last week to be able to uh, uh, withdraw or leave the service. And uh, you could see that some ministers uh, immediately did that um, and um, either resigned from the cabinet or those that initially indicated to uh, participate. Uh, and I will wait ahead uh, to say that they were withdrawing or uh, those that didn't withdraw continue their job. So, um, but we'll be waiting to see what the president is going to do because uh, some of the uh, ministers we had, uh, despite the fact that they've withdrawn from the race, their case is still hanging and the, the presidents have not come out categorically to state what uh, will happen. The same with the uh, CBN. It is so worrisome that uh, a man who is judge of the Central Bank of Nigeria is so partisan and is proven to be partisan. That does not, that is the first time in the history of Nigeria that this is happening. More so when you have that, you know that even I can, I, I neck in itself is finding it difficult and feeling so embarrassed because all the sensitive material that will be used for the election is being kept under the watch of the, uh, of the CBN. So if you are going to keep the sensitive materials for election under the care of somebody that has come out to be partisan, who is a member of the political party, then you can imagine what is going to happen if at the end of it all, election is held and the opposing parties lose, that is enough reason for them to go to court. And you might be surprised, they might get some kind of justification for their action. So uh, the president has to come out, uh, point, out uh, point clear. Uh, to say whether a uh, MEP has to leave or not, and they may have to come out soon. But let's wait. The screening of the candidates for presidential aspirants will start today. Let us see whether a MEP will be one of those that will be screened or not. Then we can take it off from there. All right. Be before we move on, uh, just a related uh, headline on the front page of the nation. The APC is, is saying that they will still go ahead to screen Jonathan, to screen Emefile and others. Um, these yet individuals never submitted the forms to the party. Well, it's still on the basis of um, rumors. We don't know the fact. APC didn't come out with a categorical statement on that. that I've never saw any press statement from APC. Uh, we don't know if uh, there was one. But if there was one, I would have seen it. Uh, there was no categorical statement by APC, about that, either by the National Publicity Secretary, the National Secretary of the Chairman of the party. The only uh, press statement that was made available to Ross as press men was that they, it was postponed, at, I think as of Sunday, then yesterday they came out uh, with another statement that that screening will start with, between today and tomorrow at Transcorp. So uh, let us wait and see. Uh, good Lord Jonathan, those, we didn't know whether those that collected the form on his behalf submitted or not. The may feel we don't know whether he submitted or not. But as I said, between today and tomorrow, we will know those that have been screened, then we can start uh, assuming. But for now, it's just an assumption. Nobody knows who and who. Uh, for Emefile and uh, Good Lord Jonathan, nobody can say for sure. Even some of those that um, already we do, people like uh, um, Chris Ngige and one or two other persons, we, we're also hearing that <laughs> their name is still there, that they'll be screened. So um, let's wait and see what um, happens between today and tomorrow when the screening of the aspirants uh, will be concluded. All right, let, let's take a look at the punch now. Uh, on the punch, you have a headline that talks about the sit-at-home order and the fact that it's paralyzed uh, Imo State and Anambra State. We're looking at the economy of this state now. Mostly, you want to see the economy in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Uh, banks short and schools short down. 
I mean, how do we even progress? How do we even get out of this situation when uh, there are reports saying that Nigeria is the, um, the capital of, you know, the most poorest people? Personally, Messi, I'm tired of talking about this every Monday, it's practically every time we've been talking about this, it's just like repeating ourselves. They practically said everything that needs to be said, and I don't see anything, to, I don't have any other things to say to this, because uh, over time, we have talked about the uh, colossus economic losses uh, in the Southeast, uh, occasioned by this Monday sit at home. And not only Monday sit at home, also when any day that Nam De Kalu, the leader of uh, IPOP, is going to go there, there's always going to be a sit at home murder. IPOP have come out to say that it did not give any directive to that effect that um, South Eastern should go about their normal businesses. So what I'm asking now, who is the person enforcing that? Who is asking that if the man that um, you say you are trying to protest uh, against and so is saying that he is not behind it, then who is behind it? Then it also, it also means that the, the, the leadership within the South East has totally failed these people totally because if why the, the reason why people sit at home is not because they really want to sit at home, but because that they know that their lives and property cannot be protected by those in government. The security agents cannot be able to protect them. So if they go out and they get killed or murdered or whatever, then they are on their own. If there is enough protection for everybody within this region, then that it will be easier. So it is much easier for anybody to come and say, "Oh, go about it." Um, um, the former governor Obiano did it before he left. It didn't work at a point. I remember one one of these periods. You see him. You saw him walking around the street and going from one market to another. But people still shut down. When Soludo came in, he gave a, a flat order that uh, the civil servants must be at work. The market must be open. What has happened? Nothing happened. So um, it, it, it is quite unfortunate because I have always said the time and time okay, that. You don't continue if you are fighting. You are fighting for your people, and you are also trying to improve them. The same people you are trying to fight for are the people you are improving. You are people you are stopping from going about their normal businesses. That people you are killing their economy. It has even gone beyond that. What have we seen now? We have seen a lot of killing within the southeast, and just a few days ago, a lawmaker was beheaded. But this is what we hear of ISIS in those days. Something that was very strange to us. We never thought of. Or at times you look at the Boko Haram, some of the when they release some of their videos and rest. But it is happening in the South East. That shows you the level of insecurity in the South. So you're not just staying as they stay at home on Monday. It has gone beyond that. A lot of people are so afraid to go about their businesses in the South East. And that to me is a failure of government. The primary responsibility of every government is the security of life and property. And any government at whatever level, federal, state, or local government that cannot make do can be seen to be a total failure. Mm. But Chris, you, you're, you're blaming government for this. Um, I don't know whether you're blaming the federal government or state government, local government, so all of them. Uh, but some would say that um, uh, this, 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 um, this trend was, was tolerated and even encouraged by some governors in the name of um, agitations and uh, that some you know, indigents of the southeast, residents of the southeast, also encouraged the trend uh, when it started as a little fire and now it's become a behemoth that cannot be controlled. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, you know, when it comes to issues like this, um, there's a state in my place that uh, it's not just giving a monkey a, 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 a cup of water to take. You can give, quickly climb up, give a monkey a cup of water to take. But the problem is, how do you retrieve that cup from the monkey? Because it may take that one, uh, that cup from you and take the water. It's that jumping from one tree to another. Are you going to be jumping with the monkey and the rest of it? So that is the problem we are having. Uh, this has become an endemic, and some people are taking full advantage of the situation to, to cause havoc. Yes, it was an agitation. I personally said the time with that number that as somebody from the southeast, uh, you might just you cannot just throw the baby with the bad water away. I do not be. I am not a, a member of IPO. But I resonate with some of the issues raised by someone like Nnam the the issue of marginalization and um, marginalization of the Southeast, the Yibos and the rest of them. I, am, I want a more pragmatic um, approach to the issue. Uh, but some people want to resort to violence, and that is what, because he who rides on the tiger most of the time ends up in the stomach. It is easier for you to start something. But being able to copy it, it's just like a, 
our normal uh, students are yours. Uh, when we're in the university, you know, when we do our Luta, you know, we've talked about our Luta several times. You, you and I, and the being uh, an Luta guy, yourself. Uh, we start an Luta in the university, we attack protest. But before you do it, hoodlums take over the control of that and it, it gets out of our control. So while we can be able to control our students, our fellow Aluta, we'll be able to, you'll we'll not be able to control the agrios and the rest of them, they'll take advantage of it. There's a big one extorting them, um, the motorists, doing that, burning down uh, vehicles and the rest of them. The same thing with what is going on. It has totally, those that started this must be able to find a way of public because the Southeast is becoming a no-go area for so many people. Uh, and that in itself is killing the economy, killing the political and social life of the Southeast. With time, we might just end up doing worse than the Northeast as it was in, in the past. All right. L let's um, stay with the Southeast and the agitations of that part of the country uh, to produce the next president of Nigeria. The leadership newspaper um, gives some, some attention to this with its uh, lead story, uh, saying that um, the former Minister of Science and Technology, Ogbon Nayaonu, may be President Buhari's dark horse. Now, is this something that you, you think is possible? And probably did you see this coming, that this man will be a major um, a player as far as the elections or the APC candidature is concerned? Politics is a dynamic thing. Uh, you cannot be able to determine uh, what will happen in the next moment. Um, a, a day is as long as... Uh, a year in the life of politics, anything can change, the dynamic can change at any given point in time. Um, so what I'm just saying is just a congestion by certain people. Don't forget that every candidate has a way of selling himself, uh, that uh, is really through the media and giving us also a reason. The president came out to say that he has a candidate. He never came out to say the candidate, who the candidate uh, was. And um, he has not said he just have barely a few days to the, um, to the primaries. Uh, for the pres uh, presidential candidate of the, uh, and we have close to about 25 or 27 candidates. Um, so I don't know. I'm not a member of APC. We can only but continue to put up this conjecture. But uh, if I may, if I my own inner thinking from what I've seen um, uh, so far, there are still some several front runners within the APC, and I wouldn't know whether um, Ubu Nayoni is one of them. I've not been seeing him moving around. I don't see how he's able to pick up delegates. I've seen the front runners for me remains uh, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tunubu, um, Yemi Oshibajo, probably um, um, the senior president, Ahmed Lawan, uh, former transportation minister, uh, Amechi, and one or two others. Um, on I don't know what is with. But don't forget that in the past, Ubunayan was also a presidential candidate of one of the political parties and he was made to stop, step down for President Muhammad Buhari then. Uh, I think it was during the days of AMPP, CPC, and the rest of them. But if the president, in his wisdom, finds him uh, probably that he is the one that he wants to choose, all well and good. But the, it's just the president. It is the delegates that are going to win. And to make it even worse for now, from what we've read from the papers, you can see that statutory delegates will not be part of, will not be part of this primary. Except the president signed the amended electoral uh, uh, act uh, as quickly as possible. If he doesn't, the delegates within the APC will reduce from 7,800 or about to about 2,400 or so. That is a large chunk of the day. I don't know how the members of the National Assembly made that mistake in the course of passing that bill. They are there to make laws. They have their aides who are supposed to help them in putting this thing together. But the 360 members of the House of Representatives and 109 senators overlook issues like the statutory delegates, of which they are also part of. Then we are not able to muster this and, and get this within the electoral act, only for them to come and uh, look at that. I mean, the president is leading, he has made up his mind. If the president doesn't sign it, that means a large chunk of the delegates, it will only be the elected delegates that will be part of the primaries, and that in itself is like shooting themselves on the foot. All right, uh, let's also take a look at the uh, Punch newspaper. It talks about states groaning over delayed revenue sharing and the fact that you have the FAA meets uh, today. Now, also, um, with this, it's also been reported and the complaints coming, especially from the Commission of Finance and Benway State, talking about 
um, salaries not being paid, is affected salaries being paid for states, and also capital expenditure being carried out. Now, how long will states continue in this pattern? And what can really be done? I mean, how do we grow an economy? How do we even, you know, catch up, try to catch up with developed climes if we constantly have states having to be very dependent on federal allocation? Well, Mr. has nothing new in what they are doing. It's, uh, it has become a daily occurrence. Every month, they'll fight over uh, 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 at um the sharing formula or what is to be shared, deductions and the, you see all the commissioners um, disagreeing with uh, the federal government on the, the and for me it's neither here nor there. There's it there's so much there's dwindling within the fortune of Nigeria in what we earn. Um, we are not we are not making much progress on a monthly basis our foreign earnings um, continue to do it. And personally um, in my personal opinion uh, I don't seem to bother myself with the state because the fact remains that at, until we find a new way of doing things, we will continue to come to this um, this uh, terrible situation every month. We a situation where the state government have to depend on the federal government close to 90% for their survival. This is not how to grow a country. That is not how to grow an economy. That is not how to grow uh, politically, economically, socially, and otherwise, because come to think of it, each of these states have become so more about that they don't even have, they, they are not even creative at all. They are in IG, or the internally generated revenue is doing it by day. They are not even doing much, maybe to do this, uh, to grow this. So that in itself, where they just sit back every month, I just go to Abuja to go and collect support from the federal government, come back and share it within themselves, is not going to help any matter. The governors are not doing what they are supposed to do. Yes, we can say that there's so much problem that the economy is not looking up and the rest of them. But you can also be very, very creative in your way of generating. Let's, let me take you back to what happened in, in, in the, uh, the, first, uh, the first four years of, uh, of yes, uh, first four, eight years, when uh, we had um, General Lushego and Vassanji as the president of Nigeria. And Lagos State was denied is a, a monthly allocation because of the problem between the federal government or Basanjo and Bola Ahmed Tinubu. That made the, the Lagos State government to go back and be able to re-strategize and be able to come out with something robust and the way of internal uh, IGR. At the end of it, your Lagos State, yes, you can say that Lagos State, yes, has the potentials like River State and one or two other states to be able to go. But they were able to reinvent themselves. And at the end of it, they didn't even need anything from the federal government. But if they have consistently remained and just, if not for that issue they had, uh, Lagos State had with federal government, uh, maybe Lagos State today still wouldn't have been just, have been like every other state. But you can see Lagos State at any given point in time, whether they're getting anything from federal or not, Lagos State can solely depend on the so The same thing I expect these states to do. That, that is what they need to do. There are a lot they can be able to do to generate. They can go into agriculture for goodness sake. If they go into agriculture so much, they can make so much money from agriculture. Let us even look at other uh, areas where you can see that uh, the federal government is having a strong goal, area of minerals and rest of it. There are still other avenues of making money, but they are so lazy, and all they do is just wait every month. They go to Abuja to share what Abuja have to give and go back to their state and wait till the next month. Until we we able to do the right thing, they will continue to go uh, continue with this kind of problem every month, monthly, month in, month out. That will always be the issue. So um, for them to be able to do the right thing, they then just do the right thing and get creative and find ways of surviving out of, without dependence on the federal government and what's come from FAC. All right, let, let, let's go back a bit to this issue of the progressive Congress and the super delegates, as some call them, or statutory delegates. Um, because you raise an important point. But there's also an angle to this, Chris Kennedy Wando, of Lagos State, who should ordinarily have had uh, a 60 delegates, uh, sorry, 304 delegates now, if the president doesn't sign the main electoral uh, bill uh, or act, will now have 60 delegates. And it seems that states, from, from the analysis, states that have um, more APC officials that are APC-led in terms of the governance of that state, 
um, but have fewer local government areas who have fewer delegates, while states that do not have an APC government but have more local government areas who have more delegates. So, for instance, a state like Lagos that has only 20 local government areas uh, but has a lot of APC um, uh, appointed officials or elected officials who have only 60 delegates, a uh, state like uh, a, a river state that has more local government areas than Lagos state but doesn't have an APC uh, state government and has fewer APC appointees who have more delegates than Lagos state. How do you think this this is disadvantage for Lagos state if the status quo remains will pan out, especially with the chances of Bola Metinbo in the presidential primary? Uh, this will definitely change the dynamics and the calculation um, in, the, in the outcome of the um, of the uh, primaries. If it remains, if the status quo remains as it were. You know, I said it earlier on. From all indications, uh, without the statutory delegates, the uh, de delegates to the uh, primaries of the APC, I'm unsure from that of PDP, is the same. It's going to be the same thing. It's totally reduced. I said it's going to be from about 7,800 to about 2,482, uh, but not more than 2,300 and something. Yeah. So you can see that a large chunk of the delegates were not going to participate. And that itself will also affect the fortune of most of the um, aspirants who are depending on most of these states for some kind of support. Um, yes, Lagos State is there from what we've seen. Lagos is maybe about 20, maybe about 30. Or, Lagos is supposed to have uh, close to about 130. But 304. Have only 20, is it? But some other states who had a large number of um, local governments uh, won't be fully really affected. States like Asina, states like Kanu, uh, we still have their numbers. Bonu State will be depleted from what we've seen. Bonu is moving from, I think, about seven or thirds to about fifth within the delegates. Uh, this thing. Whereas some states in the southeast and the uh, southeast and even south south may get, have more delegates. Um, than a state like Lagos State, state that have more local government than Lagos State. So that is the situation. I personally think that um, it is for the governors to be able to prevail, especially the governors of the APC, because they are the ones running the government, to be able to prevail on the uh, on the president to be able to do the need to do. I don't. The president has not given any reason why he has not signed that list uh, because that in itself may also exclude him from also voting. A, a government official. Yes, but but, but Chris be, Kenny wanted. Do, do, do you believe? Told me that, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. The president not sign. It is to the advantage. That okay. I don't know what he meant by it. it is to their own advantage. I don't know what he meant by that. Maybe they are one of those that are not expecting so much from most of these states. So the little that is coming, they might be able to grab. But unless the president signed that electoral uh, amended electoral act. Um, as quickly as possible. Yeah, but, but Chris, be, before you go, Chris you Kende Wando, can, can you hear me, sir? And don't forget, most of them paid as much as 100 million to get that, um, uh, to pick up those forms uh, in the PDP, it was 40 million. And if they're depending on this delegate and they're not going to get them, I wonder where they're going to get the numbers from. All right, Chris Kende Wando, I, I was asking you for your thoughts on um, uh, the chances or the effect this will have on Tinubu's um, aspiration, but I think you you um, attacked tactfully dodged that, so we'll leave that for another day. And um, but we have to go. We want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Have a nice day ahead. Well, that's the size of our conversation this morning. Thank you so much, Chris Kane de Wandu, for being part of the breakfast of the press. We look forward to having you uh, next week. We'll step on the brakes. When we return, it will be time for us to head straight to our major conversation. That's right here. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history. Stay with us. <laughs>